Hi, my name is Johan Mora Valverde, and I am the SPAN Parent Advocacy Network Youth Coordinator. Today, we are continuing our Advocacy Stories by Youth for Youth series. And in this series, we like to highlight youth and young adults who talk about their life experience as well as any other um, perspectives that they wanna share on their life um, as youth and young adults um, who practice advocacy or have advocacy experiences. Um, and today I'd like to introduce Matthew, um, who is gonna talk a little bit about himself. Hi, uh, my name is um, Matthew Kaminsky. Uh, um, I am a high functioning autistic, meaning I uh, do, I don't do as well in like social situations, but I, I do do better academically. Uh, so I tend, I don't require as, I don't know, I don't know. I like, I, uh, I tend to be more, I feel like I'm more independent, more like, more like introverted than most people at school, which uh, causes, which could have caused, which caused, caused a lot of problems at um, some of my schools. Uh, middle school was very rough for me because that's when everyone's all riled up and stuff. Uh, so I had, I had like, I had for um, that year, I had, um, I had like an aide that, that, that followed me around, you know, just kept me in track, focus and stuff like that. Uh, I don't really have that anymore. I kind of like adjusted to it. Uh, but like, as stuff like, small stuff like that really helped. Sharon, and I'm glad you took your time um, and I welcome you to come on to the series um, as well. And, and we'll we're definitely, definitely learn a lot more from your um, perspective. Uh, so one of the things I want to ask to kick us off is, um, can you talk a little bit about your advocacy experience, let's say during school? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have a story that I have to, I can tell. Uh, so like I, I, this was around the when I first started being able to attend my IEP meetings. Uh, I think you have to be like fourteen or something to in order to like actually attend them. I don't remember the exact dates. It's been a while. Uh, so in the, in this year it was like I think we we were still in quarantine and like online and stuff. So I did a little bit better academically because I didn't have to worry about actually going into school, and I could do my, all my assignments just really early and get them over with because they didn't really have you like actively do stuff. So my grades are a little bit better. Uh, so uh, in the uh, in the meeting, they stated that because I was doing so well academically, there was uh, no need for an IEP anymore. And they're gonna switch it to a 504, which is like less powerful as an IEP. Uh, but like we, uh, we realized that like what they were basing the evidence off of was circ circumstantial because quarantine isn't usually something that happens and I don't have much social experience, which is why I have the IP in the first place. So I had to, uh, I had to like go on the meeting it was like, I reviewed it over with like my mom and stuff about what was going to go on. So they knew everything. And I, I had to play, I basically when I, what I did was I, I played the fool, you know, like I didn't know what I was doing, didn't mm. know anything about it. And I, and then, and like, so like, I asked them to describe what they thought it would do and how it would benefit me. And then I asked questions that would contradict the statements because I knew what was going on, but they didn't know that I knew, you know? Right, right. So like they, they, they said uh, like a 504 offers everything that my current IEP has. Uh, and, I, and I would say, if that's true, then why is there a need to switch, you know? Mm. Mm. Because I because the 504 makes it, I believe, more like suggestive, like these are stuff you have to do accommodations, I think they call it. Mm -hmm. While the IEP is more or less they're changing the curriculum, so it's more powerful and like actually teachers have to follow it. Right, right. And there's more to an IEP, right? Um, so you felt that you you decided to sort of take a seat and listen, and then speak up when the time was ready to speak up, right? When you wanted yes, to voice yeah. a concern, right? Yeah, that's important. 
And also, I, I, I think actually about that, uh, some of the teachers, right? some of the people I was talking with had to leave early because they're getting, they're getting really inferior because I was winning the entire time. Right. Well, it's important because you were voicing your concern, um, right? You, you're sharing your voice. So what, what, what does that mean to you? Like what challenges did you feel that you had to advocate or maybe some challenges at school that you felt you really needed to speak up about? Like challenges in like school? Sure, like general. some talent, maybe some challenges in class or in general. I, I, I definitely, I definitely have probably the normal feeling that everyone does when they, when I get a notification on my phone that says my grade dropped a whole lot. Right. And, you know, my the heart, the heart sinking feeling, and mm. it kind of gets me motivated to like get it done as fast as possible. As soon as I get home, next class that I have nothing to do in, you know. Like right. one of my grades dropped to an F recently, so I, I was like, oh god, I have to get this done. So I did it in the yes. next class, which I had a computer in, and just got all done right there. Yes, yes. And how do you feel you're able to really overcome these challenges? Is it? Like, you I know, feel like I feel like constantly checking my phone all the time actually does right. help, hmm. because I because I I don't actually memorize my schedule in my mind, like what time classes end. So oftentimes I'll check the um I'll check like power school or something whatever it is in other school districts, uh I I'll check it and to, for my schedule to see what time the period ends and usually it'll come up with my grades first so I'll be like oh yeah I might as well check my grades, and if it's bad I'll be like oh that's not good I have to do something about that you know. So you're taking action you're you're waiting to see what comes up and then you take action for yourself right if the, you see yeah great. yeah. So. Yes. Most of my teachers offer the opportunity to retake tests and stuff, so it's been it's it's not been that hard to remake stuff. Right. And what help would you say you received for others? Have you received for help from your classmates, maybe some parents, the I, school? I, mostly, mostly my teachers are just very forgiving. Okay. Uh, if I have a question, I'll ask them, which I I feel definitely makes them more open to answer more complicated questions later on. Yes. You know, like if if I. If, like if I ask about about a subject saying I just don't understand it, they may be more willing to ex re-explain it for me, you know? Yes. And did that come naturally to you? Being able to go to a teacher and ask him, like how, when did that start it, happening? It, so that was it did come naturally. The, the teachers that I feel like I have a closer relationship with, I'll tend to do more right. often. Like I'm probably not going to go, I'm probably not going to go after school to seek extra help for my history teacher. I don't know. I don't know him very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, nor does he assign many, many assignments anyways. So I don't see a need to like ask him questions. Or if, if I were to talk about my physics class, I'd probably be more prone to ask, ask questions. Because sometimes I'll miss a formula too, because I'll be absent or I'm just forgot to write it down or something. Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask and, and I'll also get, I'll also ask for like reminders as well. Like, uh, like one thing I have to ask for mind is frequently for is like a uh, changing changing like units of measurement, mm -hmm. like from kilograms to grams. Like, do I multiply here? Do I divide here? That's kind of a bit harder for me to um, understand because I think you you divide for when you're going from no yeah you 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 multiply when you go from big to small. Yet you divide going from small to big, which is the opposite of what you would you would think. Yes. So I, have and, to, I have to I have to reassure myself that I'm doing it correctly, you know, and that's where you, if you weren't sure if you're doing it correctly, you would ask your teacher. Yeah, I would ask. advocate and speak up. Right. I, I recently had a moment in physics where I, I got an answer that was not what I expected. Mm. So I tried doing it the other way, got a different answer, which I didn't think I expected either. So I just put I put the original one down and I asked him why it was. And he he does he pointed out that the um the thing we're talking about we're talking about like a machine and how how it functions like I think yes. pressure how much pressure it gives off or like 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 you know how levers like take away some weight on objects. Uh, he said that the reason why the answer I got wasn't expected was um it's be because what I, what I got was the uh, the lever actually inc actually increased the the weight, making it heavier to push down. It's is something that doesn't usually happen. And he said that the reason it happened was just because it was poorly designed and it was not actually a fault in my calc fault in my calculations. Right. And he also, he also gave me a, 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 a chocolate for that as well. 
<laughs> so nice. I, I guess I was the only one to point that out because I was just I had a lot of questions about that. And and questions are important. Um, and and it makes me curious. You know, what are you currently right now advocating or you're looking forward to that you feel it's something important um, in the next couple of months for you? Like, are you looking for, are you looking for colleges? Are you? Yeah, colleges. I have yet to take them. I have yet to take my SATs and I'm hoping my, my family, my parents forget about that. So I don't have to, <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to take that anyways, even though it's mostly optional now, nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, yeah, that's the thing I have to work for. I have a, I have like a whole list of stuff I have to work on. I have to work on getting like a debit card or something because I can't get that myself. I need someone to co-sign right. or whatever. I'm working on actually getting a job. I'm working on ha being able to buy stuff for myself and I have to ask my parents because I feel I don't want to do that. I want to provide mm -hmm. for myself. But uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to have my driver's test in six months. Nice. That, that, that's that's six months. So I don't have to worry about that very much. A lot of things are coming your way, and and, and it's great to see that you're advocating, you're speaking up, um, and you're looking and, and you have a, a system where you have parents or a team that are supporting you, which is awesome. What would you say um, if you were speaking to those watching the video right now? What would you say is a tip? or advice that you have for them um, as they're practicing self-advocacy? Do you have any advice on advocacy? Uh, just show up to IEP meetings uh, if you can. Try to, try to get involved with um, everything in the school. Uh, right. even, though, even though it might be boring to attend meetings, it's important to be there because you have an actual word. Hmm. Yes, that, that your, word, that your word would most likely be taken above your parents because it's you you're talking about. They're talking about, mm -hmm. and that's not supposed to be. That's not supposed to be stressful anyway, because I can see how that can be stressful for people. It's not meant to be. It's just meant to be like, just speak your mind. You know. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm sure those who um are watching this video are also hearing you when it is that you should be a part of everything that is about you, right? Be a part of any conversation that's about you because you are your best self-advocate. So thank you, Matthew, for um, coming on and sharing your perspective and sharing your experience with us on advocacy and those challenges that you're currently advocating or you advocated for. Um, for those um, who are watching, um, there are many more videos like this to come. So we encourage you to subscribe to the SPAN Parent Advocacy Network SPAN YouTube page. Um, and you can find more information on how to connect with SPAN in the video description down below. Thank you.